See, it's not that we're, uh, Jesus is appealing just to each individual and that's it, it's me and God. No, no. He sends us out, all of us. He redirects our paths. If we were selfish before, we have to be generous now. If we were single-minded, we have to be open-minded. If we were angry people, we have to be people of joy. He reroutes us if we let him get in. If we let Jesus inside our hearts and minds. That's why we read the gospel every year, the same gospels, you might say. Because we need to be reminded that Jesus is rerouting us. Because we're people. We're all born in the world. We're all people. And our society and our families and our politics structure us. Then comes Jesus and he reroutes us. Because the, the world does not favor Christ. You know that. There's no secret there. The world does not favor Christians. You know that. There's no secret there. The persecution in many countries throughout the world. Why? Because those Christians were following Jesus, not the politics of the nation. Whatever nation we're talking about. Whatever ghetto we're talking about. Whatever village we're talking about. Jesus reroutes those people. And he gives, gives us, through one another, the good news. That's why the apostles even call it the good news. The good news being that we're called to emulate Jesus. And, and if sometimes like we need information, we need a little background, and that background comes to us in the two readings that we have today, besides the gospel, in, in the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles. We don't just pull this stuff out of the sky. There's history here. And when the author of this section attributed to Peter talks about what happened, he explains what we call the kerygma. It's, it's the oldest part of the church's teaching. Kerygma, in a few sentences, Jesus sent by God, Jesus did good works, Jesus was killed, Jesus rose from the dead. That's the kerygma, that's it. That's what we believe. But it hasn't sunken in to many, many people, many, many lands. So what, is, what does Peter get up to do? He gets up and gives them, whoa, folks, you know, the one you crucified, you hung him on a tree, he's alive. He appeared to us. So what is he doing? Peter is rerouting their faith, rerouting and, and giving a direction to his own faith. And say, so all the things you heard about Jesus came to us from David, King David. And again, go back to the Holy Land. The place that is attributed to be the upper room in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, is literally that. It's upstairs. Okay? We were there. On the same block, in their little narrow section streets, is the tomb of King David. So before you get up to the upper room, you pass this, it's more than a chapel, it's like a, a, a Jewish synagogue, with the tomb of King David, and a section for the women, and a section for the men, and music in the background, the singing, prayers are going on all day long. Because this is the tomb of David, the ancestor of Jesus, David, who predicted Jesus, David, who was the great king. Okay, so that's very important. So when Peter gets up and says, his grave is still with us, they know what they mean, and we know what he means. That David was a great prophet, and he talked about the day that God will return, and someone from his ancestry will return, and he fulfilled. This is history. He fulfilled it by coming, Jesus. So what David had predicted, and we all know David's word is authentic because he was the king, happened in Jesus. So how can we listen to this and not be changed? How can we listen to the words of, of the scriptures and not be rerouted? And I, I don't mean geography, I don't mean itinerary, I mean lifestyle. How can any of us, I mean, think about this. It's like a nail in his, in his arm. Prejudice. How can any of us be greedy? A nail in another hand. How can any of us hate stepping him aside? Remember growing up, we said, oh, Jesus died for our sins and all that. It's authentic, yes. 
But sometimes we need a, a graphic reminder that Jesus is with us right now, and when we are sinners, when we disgrace our faith and our Lord, we're stabbing him again. We're crowning him with thorns again. My grandmother used to tell me that on Good Friday. We were forbidden to go play outside. We could stay inside, we can do homework, we can read, we can pray, but you couldn't run in the streets or play ball. We used to play stickball. Why, Grandma? Because this, on Good Friday, this was the day that Jesus fell on the ground three times on his way to Calvary, and he made the earth sacred because of that. That was theology according to Rosalia. But you know what? It was pretty accurate. By his spilling of his blood onto the earth, the earth became sacred. The earth is one big sacramental. How dare we take advantage of the earth? How dare we disgrace the rivers and pollute our own environment? How dare we pollute our fellow man and woman? How dare we mutilate ourselves, the bodies that were created by God? It's mind-blowing. So we need the resurrection story. We need Easter once a year to reroute us, to reroute us. And, you know, again, this is not a religion between God and me. This is a religion between God and all of us. So it's up to us to preach it, sometimes in words, sometimes, most of the times, in deeds. It's up to us to be the apostles who run out and proclaim Jesus. And, and Peter says this, hey, listen, he, he came to us and we started speaking in tongues. We didn't even know what we were doing. And then the doors opened and the Holy Spirit was filled and we all went out pro proclaiming our faith. That's important for us to realize. It didn't happen once, it's happening again today. And you know why I say it today? Because over here, and in this box, as you know, the tabernacle, over here, is bread. That's all it is. Flat bread, reminiscent of the Seder Passover bread, the, the, the Passover bread that was flattened, no, no yeast in it. In a few moments, this bread will be recognized by all of us as Christ. It was no accident that Cleopas and his companion went into the home they were staying at and invited Jesus, they didn't know who he was, to sit with them. It's no accident that the way those words were recorded are reminiscent of the Last Supper. When they sat down, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Read Luke's Gospel of the Last Supper, and that's what you'll read. So Luke knew what he was doing when he's recounting what Jesus is doing to remind Cleopas, to remind you and me, that when we come here and we break bread and we receive, we receive the body and blood of Christ, that should renew us and reroute us. Even if we came with an infinitesimal amount of anger, hate, jealousy, greed, anything in our lives that was unattractive, we have to leave here rerouted because we're taking with us Jesus, the resurrected Lord.